could get out of him for a bit. Stabbed, wasn't she, Mrs. Finch? No, dear, strangled with her own skull. Her own skull? Fancy. Well, I heard she was stabbed. Seeing as how it was my Alpheus found her, Mrs. Parker, I think I ought to know. Is she still up there? Yes, poor soul, and all those coppers nosing around. All right, sir, finish now. Polly, pretty Polly. Pity. The one witness who knows all the answers and he won't talk. These are all the photographs, sir. Shouldn't be surprised if we found a few of these beauties in our own rogues gallery. There's a familiar face. Hmm. John Mills. Wilson. She used to work there, too. What, in the fun fair? She had a fortune teller's booth. Oh. This might lead to something, sir. Not so much the picture as the card wedged in the frame. W.T. Gunter, private detective agency. I wonder what the connection can be. Send a man down to see this, Gunter. All right, sir. Well, Doctor. Death from asphyxia due to strangulation. Been dead about tw 12 hours, I should say. 12 hours? That puts it sometime last night. Uh -huh. She was wearing a wristlet watch, which we may assume was broken in the struggle. It stopped at 10 minutes to 9. Yes, that would be about the time. What about the bruising? Nothing to cause serious injury and all inflicted before death. So she put up a fight for it? Yes, she put up a fight. If there's anything more after the PM, I'll let you know, but I don't think there will be. Well, thank you, Doctor. I just found this on the floor, sir. After they moved the body, she must have been lying on it. St. Christopher. Sort of charm, isn't it? Yes, it's usually worn by a traveller for protection on a journey. Might have come off in the struggle. Well, thank you, Fraser. Let's see the boy who found her. Well, I always say, Mrs. Finch, you can't play with fire without getting burnt. Oh, can you say such things, Mrs. Parker? And they're not cold yet. Mrs. Finch? Yes? With police officers. I'd like a word with your son. Yes, I'll call him. Alfie! Alfie! Come downstairs at once. You'll want to bother police. I can't, Mum. Never mind what you're doing. Come down when you're told. I'm afraid he's a bit shook. And so am I. Never was so shook. Never. Not since Alfie's father died. Oh, there you are. Come on, come in. Come in, son, and sit down. Just want to have a chat about this morning. Do as the gentleman tells you, ducks. Bend yourself. Now, Alfie, I believe you always took the paper into the lady next door, didn't you? Always. She always gave him a sweet or a cake or something. Oh, she was very kind to Alfie, a sweet son. Just let the boy answer for himself, will you, madam? Now, Alfie, what time was it when you went into the house? Eight o'clock. Now, think carefully. You didn't touch anything, did you? No. no. You sure? Alfie wouldn't touch nothing. Tell him he wouldn't touch nothing, Alfie. I touch nothing. All right, son. I don't think you can help us any more for the moment. Come on. You run along now. You shouldn't really be in here with your boots on. Mrs. Finch, you knew Mrs. Houston, I believe. I mean, uh, personally. Oh, yes. I shouldn't think anyone else in the street knew as much about her. I mean, we was on very close terms. There's not many of the neighbours I'd care to be friendly with, but Mrs. Houston, she was different. Yes, she was rather young for a fortune teller, wasn't she? Well, she had a lot of bad luck, poor girl. And she had to do something. Mind you, she was very clever at it. I remember when... You saw her quite often, didn't you? Oh, yes. I used to go in twice a week regular to clean up. Then last year she was took very poorly and it struck me she needed someone to look after her, her being such a lady. She used to leave the key behind the door so that those that knew her could use it and have the freedom of the house. I often used to go in and make her a cup of tea. Here's your cup of tea, dear. Don't let it get cold. Thank you, Mrs. Finch. I'll just pull the curtains. There. 
Beautiful sunshine outside, but it's a bit nippy. Yes, it's on the nippy side, oh, all Mrs. right. Mrs. Finch, don't draw those curtains. I have a slight headache this morning. Oh, you was late last night, I know. <laughs> yes, I was at a party. Yeah. Professionally, of course. Yeah. I couldn't get away until... I heard you come in. Morning, Mrs. Oosted! Oh, Alfie. Here's a piper. Thank you, Alfie. Hello, Polly. Hello, Polly. Why won't he speak to me? Don't you never say nothing? Oh, yes, he does, but you have to teach him, and it takes rather a long time. I'll teach him, you'll see. Now then, Polly, stick him up. Stick him up. Say, stick him up. That's stick enough of that. Be off with you. Just a minute. Let's see what I've got here. Oh, two stuck together. Say thank you. Manners, manners. You spoil him, Mrs. H. You do, really. Oh, you are looking tired, dear. Thinking of that poor husband of yours. It's always on your mind, isn't it? Him lying there in hospital. No chance of him coming home yet, dear. Charles will never come home, Mrs. Finch. If only I could get to see him more often. Do you know how impossible it is? I know. I remember what it was when my hubby went. But he didn't linger. All's quick about everything, Alfred was. Get my dressing gown, will you? I shouldn't bother getting up this morning, dear, if I was you. It's bitter cold. <laughs> you spoil me, Mrs. Finch. But it is nice and warm in bed. I think perhaps I will stay. Just for once. That's right. You take a rest for a change. How can that be at this time in the morning? Why, it's that young sister of yours, that little madam. Why don't you use the key? She knows it's there. Now, don't you go giving her money. She's got more than what you have. Little cadger, that's what she is. I'll show her the little... Knock, 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 knock. All right, all right, I'm coming. Were you knocking by any chance? Knocking? I've also been ringing the bell for the last 20 minutes. Not a good that is, it don't work. Why don't you use the key? You know it's there. I don't care to take liberties in other people's houses. Oh, haughty, aren't we? Nobody'd never think you'd lived here yourself with all that paint on. You get on when you're scrubbing yourself, ace old scrounger. I'll scrounger you. Cheeky little upstart, coming round here and dressing your betters in that tone. Well, what do you want? Have you a bit of strong cord? I have if you want to hang yourself. Oh. Just a minute. Who's this chap you've just mentioned? Oh, him, Pollard. He keeps the bird shop across the road. Mrs. H used to employ him to do odd jobs, more out of kindness, really. He did up the house for her. Nice mess he made of it, too. I told her if she went to a proper mess. Thank you. Now, about this sister. Well, I'm not one to listen at doors, but I couldn't help hearing the goings on that morning. Please leave my house. Oh, all right, I'm going. You'd never dare say such things if Charles were home. You know it isn't true. Oh, isn't it? Well, why don't you ask Charles, then? Go on. Why don't you? Don't upset yourself, ducks. What was that all about, I'd like to know? Oh, good morning, Mrs. Houston. I've just come to do that window for you now. Oh, can I have a word with you? Why, certainly, Mr. Pollard. Now, don't catch cold, dear. It's about that window. Well, I have thought about it, but I'm afraid I can't tell you. You shall have it as a present, Dux. Oh, Mr. Pollard, I can't really do it. After all, I can't afford on this weather. I remember it. Tea's ready, dear. Some people I know like to talk all day. What's the matter, dear? What's your sister been saying? Come on, you can tell me, your old pal. She said that my husband was in love with her. She said that? Then why did he go and marry you, Dux? She said it happened after Charles and I were married. Don't you believe her. Now, you have a drop of this in your tea. It'll do you good. The awful thing is that... I shall never know for certain. I can't ask Charles. Did I give you the one with the gin in, dear? Yes. Yes, I think so. Oh, won't you have some? Help yourself. Oh, you're very good, Mrs. H. Very good indeed. So Mrs. Houston told you this quarrel concerned her husband's relationship with Catherine. That's what she said. That's what it was that time. Oh, there were other occasions then, were there? 
Oh, yes, the big bust up was over Mr. Baker. Baker? Who's he? Well, Mrs. H used to have a number of callers in connection with her fortune telling, of course. Some of them gentlemen, very nice gentlemen, too. And just about that time, Baker used to visit her a lot. I used to call him the man in the cowboy hat. It's the man in the cowboy hat, dear. Oh, Bob, come up. And this, Shorty, is not a cowboy hat. Well, it looks a funny hat to me. Yeah, maybe, but uh, not so funny as walking around with um, a billiard ball on your nose. Oh, smart guy, huh? Bob. OK, coming. How about some tea, Mrs. Finch? All right, dear, it's ready. Mrs. H was always a lot brighter when she was expecting Baker. I think she liked his company. But I didn't like him. Too saucy for me. And there was something about his eyes. Shifty, if you know what I mean. Oh, and I said to Mrs. H, that man's got shifty eyes, I said. And if you ask me, he's got a mind to match. But Mrs. H, she wouldn't listen to me. Always saw the good side of everyone, she did. But I didn't trust him. He said he'd come over with the American army and then stayed on after the war. He was on the stage, a magician, I think. He was trying to work up some sort of mind-reading act with Mrs. H as his partner. No, no, no. Cotton handkerchief is not a fair lady. A silk handkerchief is a fair lady. For Pete's sake, try and remember, can't you? I'm sorry, Bob. Okay, we do it again till you do get it right, though. Well, let's have a cup of tea. Oh, shucks. Don't you have any coffee? He only serves coffee after dinner. Brush up your memory with that. Once you got the code, you can't go wrong. I've tried, Bob. You'll just have to give me a little longer. All right. Oh, this is wasting my afternoon. And I don't like my afternoon being wasted. Of course, uh, maybe we could fix up some other kind of entertainment. I'm afraid I'm not a very entertaining person, Bob. Too much to think about. Anything else, dear? No, thank you, Mrs. Finch. That'll be all. Finch, I'm afraid there's been an accident. Mr. Baker has upset the tea tray. Good gracious, however did he do that? I'm afraid his manners are not very good. OK, I get it. Don't forget your hat, Mr. Baker. Quite an old English custom, isn't it? Sir, I must ring for your hat and coat. I'm sorry I wasted your time. You wasted nobody's time but your own, Bob. No. That's the last time you'll see Mr. Baker in this house. You were right, Mrs. Finch. He has a one-track mind. Yes, and it's a dirt track. So Mr. Baker got his marching orders? He did, as far as Mrs. Houston was concerned. She wouldn't wear him. But we heard more of Baker indirectly. Indirectly? In what way? Well, it was early this year. Yes, Mrs. Houston's husband died in February, and although it had been expected, she took it very bad. So at that time, I was with her most nights to keep her company. One night, a man called. Thank you very much, Mrs. Houston. You've told me all I want to know. Thank you. Good night. Good night. You don't have to tell me who that was. He was a copper. I saw his feet. What did he want? He wanted to know about Bob Baker. Know what? Oh, I can't tell you. How can people behave like that? Don't you get mixed up in anything, dear. That Baker's a nasty piece of work. Wouldn't surprise me if he didn't carry a gun. He looks the type. Well, we'll see. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything I can do. We'll keep this. It may come in useful. After all, you never know. I might want to see him again. Well, did she take your advice, or did she get mixed up in it? I don't know, but yesterday evening, Baker arrived, and who do you think was with him? Catherine. Catherine? Catherine, the sister? Oh, I thought that'd shake you. Was Mrs. Houston expecting them? Oh, no. Did she seem to be worried about anything yesterday? No, she was very bright and cheery. Mrs. Finch, she said, Mrs. Finch, I don't think I'll be a widow very much longer. Or something like that. I think she was expecting an offer that evening. Just then... Is Agnes in? We want to see her. And how we want to see her, the two-faced I'm trap. I'm sorry, she... She's in all right. Come on. It's Mrs. Houston. That man Baker's pushed his way in. Hey? I think he's got a gun. A gun? What good will I be? Come on. <laughs> Come on.
I think you're rotten. Rotten right through to the core. If she said her mind to it, there's no stopping her. You'd have to kill her first. Yeah, and that gives me great pleasure. I'm not afraid of you, Mr. Baker. No, maybe you should be. Nobody interferes with my life and gets away with it. I'm not through go with you on, yet. Go on, go on. Now, now, look. You we keep don't... your nose out of this and you want to wear it in the back of your face. Come on, Bob. We can come back later. I could quite cheerfully strangle her. And you too, you interfering old kite. Thank you, Mr. Pollard. He was a great help, I'm sure. Did Baker and Catherine go back as they threatened? They might have done. Mr. Pollard would know. He stayed on. I see. When did he leave? Do you know? No. You see, I left about six o'clock. Every Friday I go to the Spirits Church in Harbour Street. I like to keep in touch with the late Mr. Finch. It's truly wonderful well, thank when you, you think of We things. may want to see you again later, but uh, I think that's all for the present. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Finch, have you ever seen this before? No, never. Sure it didn't belong to Mrs. Houston? Yes, quite sure. Well, thank you, Mrs. Finch. Sir, the deceased woman's sister called. Yes? The manager broke the news to her at work. Just told her there'd been an accident. Inspector Wilson sent her home in the car. What? Well, sir, you see, the girl was very upset when she heard what had happened. Very kind of the inspector, I'm sure. Well, in that case, we'll have to go to her. Oh, right, sir. Yes. This fortune teller, Mrs. what do you call her, Mrs. Houston, seems to have been quite the lady. Yes. At least Mrs. Finch wanted us to think that. Why? Well, there's not many of the neighbors I'd care to be friendly with, but Mrs. Houston, she was different. Such a lady. Can't you see? You reflected Gloria. Possibly. I doubt if the sister will paint such a rosy picture. Is this where you dropped Miss Taylor? Yes, sir. She changed her mind on the way and asked to be dropped off here. Flood's Commercial Hotel. I'll bet you even money we find Baker's name in the register. There it is. R. W. Baker. And he only arrived yesterday. Good morning. What can I do for morning. you? Uh, can we see Mr. Baker? Uh, Mr. Baker? Uh... Oh, well, Mr. Baker. No, I'm afraid he's out. Oh. Is there a young lady waiting to see him? Yes. Who shall I say? <gasps> Must you see her here? I'm afraid so, yes. Oh, well, in that case, uh, she's in the coffee room. Thank you. Bob! Oh. Miss Catherine Taylor? Yes? We're police officers. You're wasting your time. Neither Bob nor I had anything to do with it. I never said you had, Miss Taylor. But you must understand that we have to make certain inquiries, and we've heard that you were not in the best of terms with your sister. Who from? Mrs. Finch, I suppose. Well, if you believe her, you'll believe anything. Oh, then she was mistaken about that. Was she? No. That was true, I'm afraid. But then you didn't know my sister as I knew her. Mrs. Finch also told us that one of the reasons for your quarrels was that Mrs. Houston thought you were, well, uh, rather over-friendly with her husband and you had a violent row about it. Oh, she said that, did she? Well, let me tell you the truth. Was you knocking? Yes. Good morning, Mrs. Finch. I've been waiting for some time. Why don't you use the key? You know it's there. Agnes doesn't like me bursting in unexpectedly on her. And what do you mean by that? You know perfectly well what I mean. Is she alone? Of course she's alone. Cheeky little upstart. What do you mean by coming round here addressing your betters like that? Good spanking, that's what you want. That's what I'll give you if I was your mum. Hello, Agnes. Oh, Joe. I wanted to talk to you. You smell expensive. What it is to be a young lady attendant in a beauty parlor. If you might bring me a bit of makeup now and again, they'd never miss it. I look awful. Feel awful, too. 
Oh, Agnes, as a matter of fact, I have brought you something today. Hmm. It's about time you knock something off. I didn't knock it off. I bought it. Who oh, fooled you? Seduction. Blast that finch isn't at the fire. Agnes, I... It's terrible. Have a drink? No, not this time of day. Can't beat it. The hair of the dog that bit you. Agnes, I went to see Charles on Sunday. Did you? Yes. He was asking after you, Agnes. He'd be an unnatural husband if he didn't, I suppose. Couldn't you try and see him more often, Agnes? I haven't got the time. Such a long way. It takes old days travelling to get there. But at this time of year, you don't have many clients. So I'm not busy in my own line. I've got other things to do, haven't I? I've got a living to make. I was talking to the doctor, and he thought that Charles might be able to come home for Christmas. What, here? Well, it's quite likely to be his last, Agnes. Oh, I can't have him here, and that's flat. Why? He's better off where he is. If anything should happen, they can give him better attention there than what I could hear. Charles would be better dead. Well, you said it, not me. But I think he would be, and that's a fact. I can't understand you, Agnes. Why did you marry him if you've got so little feeling for him? Hmm. I was none too keen to marry Charlie Houston, I can tell you. Said he'd never give me a minute's peace. Besides, I was sorry for him. He was going overseas. And a petty office's pay coming in every week is quite handy money, isn't it? I tell you, it was because I felt sorry for him. I want to be decent. For all I knew, he might have been killed. Plenty were. So that was it. You expected him to be killed. You wanted him to be killed. You're a liar. That's not what I said. It was the reason. That just goes to show what a low, dirty mind you've got. Anyway, what right have you to interfere? Coming round here, nagging me about Charles this and Charles that. You ask me. Your interest in him is none too innocent either. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You were always a bit sweet on him even before we were married, so don't deny it. Well, yes, I've always liked Charles, Liked but... him. <laughs> That's good. You've got a nerve coming here preaching to me. And all the time you're making up to a married man. Shut up, Agnes. Shut up. I'm sort of much as I can. I'll say what I like in my own house. You're a troublemaker, Katie Taylor. Always were and always will be. I bet if Charles was out of hospital, you'd be having him home for Christmas. Well, why don't you? Go on, why don't you? You vile beast. You weren't very fond of your sister, were you, Miss Taylor? I hated it! Well, do sit down. Thank you. Now, let's forget Mrs. Houston's husband for a moment. What about your friend, Mr. Baker? From what we've heard, he was, well, not the sort of man a nice girl should be interested in. Perhaps I'm the best judge of that. He used to be very friendly with your sister, too, didn't he? Until something happened. He used to go there sometimes. That's how I met him. He was trying to work up some kind of variety act with her. But as often as not, if I met him on his way to Agnes, he'd change his mind and come with me for a walk. I think he was lonely. How's it going, Bob, the act with Agnes? Oh, slowly, slowly indeed. I, I'm thinking of chucking the whole thing up. Oh, does that mean you'll be going away? Yeah, I've had the uh, offer of a job. A good one? Advertising, it has possibilities. Well, I should take it, Bob. Yeah. Catherine, did you know I was married? No, I didn't, Bob. I thought Astra might have told you. No, I've never discussed you with her. Yeah, I married a showgirl some time back. It uh, only ran five nights. Oh, I'm sorry. Waiting for the divorce to come through now, but these things take time. Yes, of course. I just had it out of my mind. I thought I'd better tell you. Well, there's no reason why you should. But I'm glad you did, Bob. 
Well, come on, let's go and have a Coke. I began to see a good deal more of Bob Baker because, well, because I liked him. He wasn't at all the kind of person I'd taken him to be when I'd first met him. And shortly afterwards, he dropped Agnes altogether and decided to take the job. So at first, he wasn't too enthusiastic. Six quid a week in commission, it's not much, is it? Well, it's a start, Bob. Mm -hmm. Catherine, I guess I told you pretty nearly all there is to know about me, haven't I? Yes, Bob. Some of it you may like, and some of it may be not so hot. Catherine, w would you marry me when my divorce comes through? <laughs> oh, Bob! That must be the world's classic proposal. Even for an American. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's another thing, too. Catherine, you know how it is in show business, don't you? Oh, no, of course you don't. Well, well, in show business, you have to kind of put on an act. You have to sell yourself, you know what I mean? It, Broadway, Hollywood, you know. If you don't, they don't take any notice of you. And so I, I've oh, been Bob, playing... Bob, what on earth are you trying to tell me? Catherine, I was born in Liverpool. I've never been farther west than Bristol in my life. Bob, after that, how could I possibly refuse? Towards the end of February, Charles Houston died. I went to the funeral, but in the circumstances, Agnes and I were a little more friendly towards each other. Hello, you've had this place done up since I was here last. Yes. Old Pollard did it before Christmas. Mr. Pollard, you certainly manage to get people to do things for you, don't you? Well, I had to pay for the paint. You look tired. I'll make you some tea. Yes, funerals are depressing no matter whose they are. It's a nice ring. Where'd you get it? Real sapphires, too. It's an engagement ring. Yes, I am engaged. Didn't you know? You never told me. Well, I haven't really seen you, have I? Oh, you're a sly one. Who is it? Nobody I know, I suppose. Yes, you do know him, as a matter of fact. Oh, who? Bob. Bob Baker. Bob Baker? I didn't even know you knew him. Yes, don't you remember? I met him here. Oh, so that's why he doesn't come round here anymore. He's got a wife already. I suppose you know that. Yes. Bob's told me everything about himself. Everything he wants you to know, anyway. <laughs> I'll say this for you, Katie. You're the one for the married men. Bob's getting a divorce. Oh. Well, I suppose it'll be a nice, respectable little wedding and a snug little dream house, eh? We hope so, yes. Funny if something went wrong and he didn't get his divorce. When's it coming off? The divorce? Oh, about April, I think. April. Oh. A lot of things can happen before then. Pet the cash desk, please. Thank you. Catherine. Bob! Catherine, I just got to talk to you. It... On second thoughts, I, I think I will have person rose. Yes, ma'am. It's about the... Thank you. Or have you cherry ripe? Yes, madam. Thank you. It's about the divorce. My solicitor say that a private detective went to call on Astrid. <laughs> you know, I simply can't make up my mind. I think perhaps, after all, I will have love kiss. Thank you. She never meant anything to me, Catherine, I swear. We've just got to find out what she's told him. How soon can you get away from here? Not till six o'clock. May I... Oh, excuse me. May I see some different shades of face powder? Yes, see you then. Is Agnes in, please? We'd like to see her. And how we'd like to see her. You keep out of here! Wait a minute, ma'am, wait a minute. We've come to see her and we mean to see her. Just stand aside, will you? So you forced your way into the house? No, we didn't force our way in. We were just insistent. Then why did Mrs. Finch send for this man over the road, this uh, bird shop man? Oh, Mrs. Finch is oh, excitable. Well, you got in at any event. Now, what about this row? I don't know. I don't remember very much. That's rather unfortunate, isn't it? We all lost our heads a bit. Did you then threaten your sister? Did you say I could quite cheerfully strangle her? No. No, I didn't. Then Mr. Baker did. Somebody said it. No, 
one said it. It was no use arguing with Agnes. We just left. Did you go back later last night? No. Then how did you spend the rest of the evening? I was with Bob, Mr. Baker, and he was with me. We didn't feel like doing very much, just had a meal and then a few drinks. Did you see anybody you knew? I don't think so. At what time did Mr. Baker leave you? I'm not sure. It was late. How late? Quite late. I, I don't know exactly. Nine, ten, eleven? Yes, eleven. About eleven. So that after leaving Marine View, the only person who can verify your movements is Mr. Baker. And you his. Is this yours? Or Mr. Baker's? I've never seen it before. Well, it didn't belong to your sister. It may have done. I wouldn't know. Bob! Oh, I know, I know, honey. I just heard. <laughs> I would suggest that Miss Taylor goes home for a while to rest. She needs it. Yeah, and whose fault's that? No, I'll stay. There's a car outside. Chief Inspector Butler will give instructions to the driver. All right, just you run along. I'll be around to see you as soon as I'm through here. Bob, I know you had nothing to do with it. I know you hadn't. Of course I didn't. Now, just you run along like I said. You've traveled quite extensively, haven't you, Mr. Baker? Is there a law against that? Is this yours by any chance? No, I'm not superstitious. Here comes the other inquisitor. Now I suppose we start getting tough. Why don't you sit down and take it easy, Mr. Baker? Because I like walking. Can't we get this thing over? Certainly, Mr. Baker, just when you're ready. There's nothing I can tell you. I can't think what you want to know. Well, now, you did know the deceased woman, didn't you? Yes, yeah, sure, I knew her. Funny thing was, she always said she'd get what she wanted when she deserved it. Look, so it's caught up on her. When did you first meet her? The end of last season. That would be... September. I first saw her in that little tin-pot arcade where she used to work the fortune-telling racket. Tough luck. Those things are made to show a profit, not to give out. The only package of cigarettes in town, and money won't buy them. Oh, I thought you were doing it for sport. Sport? Well, I haven't had a cigarette since this morning. Well, if that's all you want, I can fix you up. What's that you say? Thanks a lot. You're welcome. But are you sure you can spare all these? Oh, sure. I've got plenty. <laughs> How do you do it? Hmm. I always get what I want. When I deserve it. If I was paid No. <laughs> you can do the same for me sometimes. Well, you're my friend for life. Uh, 20 cigarettes, that's cheap. <laughs> You're in the show business. Yeah, how'd you guess? Resting? Yeah, I was with the local uh, concert party. We had a bad season. Closed early. I is this you, this, this uh, Astra? Yeah, that's me. Professionally. It's a queer kind of racket for a girl like you. How come? I just imagine they're all toothless old dames of about 83. I don't do so bad at it. If you know a better racket, let me in on it, will you? Maybe I could at that. Oh. Have you ever been on the stage? Sure. What did you do? <laughs> oh, you know, showgirl. I was just a kid at the time. Yeah, but you have been on the stage. I told you, didn't I? Okay. Come and have a Coke. Okay. What's this? That's the finest Bodeville act I ever played in. Oh, what sort of an act? It's uh, thought reading, but it's all funny, of course, done with that coat. Oh, I get it. I'm blindfolded on the stage, and you ask me what the fat lady in the third row's got in my hand, and I tell you. That's it. Well, with good booking, you make over 100 pounds a week or more. Well, why aren't you doing it now? Well, it's a double act. It needs a partner, and... My, my last partner was a honey. She, she knew the coat backwards. She had a photographic memory. <laughs> She'd need it. If she was that good, why didn't you keep her? She was my wife. In other respects, her memory was not so hot. She kept forgetting who her husband was. Hmm. Well, what's the proposition? Well, I, I thought it might be in your line. It needs somebody with personality, and well, that's why I asked you if you'd been on the stage. OK. I'll have a go at it. Well, that's fine. Now, look, take it in easy stages. Do the first piece first, and then maybe we could have a rehearsal. At. How long should I give you? Oh, about a week. If you don't see me about here, come round to my house, number six, Marine View. It's just at the back here. And, uh, 
Who do I ask for? Astra Houston. Astra Houston. Yeah, come on. Your lady in the pants sent for me to come right up. Don't tell me, let me guess. I know, the mind reading man. Well, come on in, make yourself at home. Thanks. Um, sit down. I just dropped by to see how things were going. Uh, have you learnt the code yet? Oh, that, I, I was asking Finch if she'd seen it only the other day. Have a drink? I got something here better than Coke. Well, you haven't lost it, have you? Mm, no, no, it's around somewhere. Haven't you looked at it yet? Oh, you're done. But you said a week, Astra. Hmm. Is it a week already? Well, it's more than a week. Sit down. I just came in to see if we could have a rehearsal, but uh, there's no point if you haven't learnt the code. Agnes. Oh, it's you. Don't you ever knock before coming into a room? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were alone. This is my sister Catherine, Bob Baker. I just bought a few things around for Charles, some butter and a few eggs. Well, I may not be going to see him on Tuesday, but you can leave him if you like. Well, in case you don't go, I'll, I'll post him. You, uh, haven't finished your drink. I'm very disappointed in you, Astra. Hey, you're the first American who's ever told me that. Yeah, maybe. But this is strictly a business deal. Well, what did you expect? Just that. Suits me. Shall I give you a couple more days to get the first part right? I'll be word perfect. Remember now, parrot fashion. Will the fair lady in the third row, No, please? no, no, no. Cotton handkerchief is not fair lady. Silk handkerchief is fair lady. Please try and remember, can't you? Oh, have a cup of tea. Tea? Everything stops for tea in this country. You know, Astra, I don't think you've been trying very hard. You're the star of the show. You're the center of attraction. I'm giving you the act. If you don't want to go through with it, why, just tell me. I'll get somebody else. All right, Mrs. Finch, you can go. Well, Astra, let's try this again. Just see if we can get it right from the beginning, shall we? Don't you ever relax? Sure, at the right time. You know, for a guy that can read my mind, you sure waste a lot of time. Or maybe you're just plain dumb. Maybe I'm just plain dumb. Else I wouldn't be wasting my time with a woman who's insulted when I don't make a pass at her. Are you referring to me? Don't think anyone's throwing themselves at your head because they're not. What's got into you, you broken down ham? What do you think you've got that makes you so attractive? Just the presence of mind to say no. I don't suppose anybody's ever said that to you before. Get out of here! That is my intention. Don't stand there smirking at me! Get out! Get out! My, my, my. Oh, Mrs. Finch, I'm afraid there's been an accident. I upset the tea tray. However did you do that? Guess my manners don't fit in here. Don't forget your hat, cowboy. Quite an old English custom, isn't it? Sir, I must ring for your hat and coat. You didn't see her again? No, I did not. Until last night, when you went back with Miss Taylor. My solicitors had tipped me off that while well, she'd been interfering in my divorce, a private detective had been to see her, and well, I just had to find out what she told him. I told him plenty. Yeah, I bet you told him plenty. You know there was nothing between us. Oh, wasn't there? Catherine, I know, Bob. You don't have to tell me. Oh, yes, you believe him, because that's what you want to believe. But there's not many others that will. Why should you want to do this, Agnes? What pleasure can it give you? Quite a lot. I got plenty of attention from him until I met... So oh, that's it. Yes, that's it. Think yourself a cut above me, don't you, because you've had everything so easy? Well, this is one thing you won't get so easy. If you still want this baker, you'll have to change your ideas the same as I did. And that'll take some of the polish off you. That'll take some of the starch out of you. I never struck a woman oh, yet, but... Bob! Get out! Go on, the pair of you. Get out before I call a copper. Come on, Bob. Please! Just you wait till I get in the witness box. Just you wait! I think you're rotten. Rotten to the core. You don't frighten me, Baker. Come on, Bob. You can't stop her. You'd have to kill her first. Yeah, and I'm near to doing it. And did you, Mr. Baker? What? 
Did you kill her? No, of course not. How did you spend the evening, Mr. Baker? I was with Catherine. Till when? Well, eight o'clock. It may have been half past. She had a headache and went home early. And what did you do? I came back here. See anybody here? Any of the guests? I wasn't feeling sociable. Didn't see anybody. In a ritzy joint like this? <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Baker. You won't change your address, will you, without informing us? The girl lied. She said she was with him until 11 o'clock last night. Mm, playing safe. She's obviously terrified he might be involved. What do you think? Well, I'd have greater suspicions about Mr. Baker if he'd given us a good sound alibi. Seems funny he should be so careless about his movements last night. Well, there's another witness to last night's row. Paul out the bird man? Yes, and he stayed on after Baker and the girl left. May as well see him now. Yes. Marine view, Pollard shop, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Pollard. Yeah? With police officers. I'm sorry to disturb you at your lunch hour. That's all right. I was wondering when you'd be coming. I've been expecting you. Come inside. It came to me after I'd thought about it. Maybe I ought to come and see you. Mind how you go. It's a bit dark in here. Sit down. Thank you. Sit down. You know, it used to worry me. She had all sorts calling on her in connection with her fortune telling. Exactly. That's what we were trying to find out, who her associates were, mm. particularly if there's anybody who wished her harm. I understand you were often over at the house doing odd jobs for her. Yes, often. I was only too happy to do anything for Mrs. Houston. The first time she came in was one day last summer. I was surprised at the time. She, she'd never been in before, and I hadn't ever spoken to her. Only seen her. Oh, Mr. Pollard, isn't it? That's right. I wonder if you could help me. Oh, I can but try. It's my little bird. He doesn't seem very well. Hmm. Let's have a look at him. Looks like an end bird to me. Oh, is that why he doesn't sing? <laughs> Quite probably. Uh, still, I wouldn't like to lose him. I mean her. See how puffed up she is. Mm, she's on the moat. Oh. Yes, it takes them that way sometimes. Uh, she won't die, will she? Well, she needs a lot of careful handling. You better leave her with me for a few days. Oh, but I couldn't. She'll be perfectly safe, I assure you. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure she will. It's just, it's just that it's so much bother for you. I thought perhaps if you could give me a... Um, a pill or something for her? Rum and milk. Rum? Rum and milk. Mm. Make some fighting fit. Now, you just leave her with me. I'll nurse her for a few days. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pollard. I know you understand these things much better than I do. Uh, the wife. She's bedridden. It's her aunt. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, might go off suddenly. Been expecting it now for about nine years. Better go up. She always knocks on the ceiling when she wants something. Uh, uh, thank you so much for nursing my little bird, Mr. Pollard. Don't you worry. No more about her. She'll be all right in a few days. Oh, thank you. some bad news for you, Mrs. Houston. Your little bird has passed on. Oh, dear. Well, this might be a little consolation for you. Why? It's a parrot. Oh, but, Mr. Pollard, I couldn't possibly accept him. No, why not? I brought him for you. Oh, well. Come inside. I didn't really intend to... I hope you don't mind the kitchen, Mr. Pollard. Cozy place in the house, I always think. Oh, yes. And you are cozy, my word. I'm cozy enough, but I miss my little bird. I'm sure you do. It was just something alive, so that I was never really alone. Of course I know. Pardon me asking, but you're a, you're a widow, aren't you? Well, no, I'm not really. My husband's in the naval hospital. He's not expected to live. Oh. 
Same as my wife. Might live for years, though. I know what it is. You know, sometimes I, I don't know what I'd have done without my birds. Well, what do you think of him? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, he talks. <laughs> yes, I, I, I taught him to say that. I didn't want him to use my... Well, you, you know what parrots are. <laughs> yes, indeed. But, Mr. Pollard, I really couldn't accept him. Why, he's much too valuable. Something's more valuable than birds, Mrs. Houston. Friendship, company. Yes. Now, I, I want you to have him there. Take him, he's yours. Good night. Oh, that door, it always sticks. It's the damp. It wants to come off its hinges. Really? Uh, I'll come over and do it for you in the morning. Would you? Pleasure. Now, will you push and I'll pull. I see, Mr. Pollard. So you got to know it quite well. Oh, yes. Especially after my poor wife passed on. Hmm. We understand from Mrs. Finch that Mrs. Houston had a young sister, and they didn't get on too well. I and Mighty with ideas above her station. This neighborhood wasn't good enough for her. I never had much to do with her myself, but I was always very sorry to find her at Mrs. Houston's house. She always caused trouble whenever she came. Good morning, Mrs. Houston. I've just come to do that window for you. Good morning, Mr. Pollard. Don't catch cold, dear. Something upsetting you? Oh, no. No, I'm all right. Well, you don't have to tell me what it is, I know. It's that sister of yours, isn't it? Well, she's young and rather headstrong, but I'm very fond of her. Now, what you need is cheering up a bit. You remember what I said to you about doing this place up? Only take me a couple of days. Well, I have thought about it, but I'm afraid I can't afford it. Oh, but a distemper won't cost much. Look here, you shall have it as a Christmas box. No, Mr. Pollard, I can't allow that. After all, what I can't afford, I must do without. Now, remember, Mr. Pollard, I mean it. Right, just as you say. All right, Astra, it's all finished. You can come in now. Oh, but it's lovely. There. I told you it wouldn't take long. Look, I brought the old bird down. Anything wrong? No, but between holiday seasons is always rather a worrying time for me. Ah, yes, yes. That's why I wanted this job to wait. Things get a little easier around Easter. Well, I can let you have a couple of pounds if it'll be any help. Oh, no, Al, but you can't afford it. I'm a single man now, as you might say, now my poor wife's gone. Here, take it. I won't miss a couple of pounds. Oh, no. I shall have my money from the Admiralty at the end of the week. Oh, till then. Come on. It's worth a couple of pounds to see that worry go from your face. Oh, thank you. I'll add it to the rest. I hope you're keeping an account. <laughs> Mr. Murray, Mr. Pollard. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Murray's just returned from sea. Oh. I'd better be getting along. I'm sorry about this, but he's a friend of my husband. See you tomorrow. Well, all this is very interesting, Mr. Pollard, but what about yesterday? Yesterday? Yes, we understand there was some kind of a row. Yes. Baker. I never did like that young fella. Him and young Kathleen forced their way in last night. So we've heard. What time would that be, do you think? Just after six. I was getting ready to shut up the shop. Mrs. Finch fetched me over. Quick, it's Mrs. Houston. That man Baker's pushed his way in. I think he's got a gun. All right, all right. Don't fuss. <laughs> Your Leave rock, this rock. to me. It's no use. If she's had her mind to it, there's no stopping her. You'd have to kill her first. Yeah, and I'd be just the one to do it. I don't think I'm through with you yet. Now then, none of that talk here. Be about your business, both of you. You keep out of this, mister. It's you that'll keep out of it. Out of this house. Now go on, off with you. As for you, miss, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Come on, Bob, we'll come back later. Yeah, we'll be back later. And if you do, you'll find me here. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pollard. I don't know what I'd have done without you. All right, Mrs. Finch, you can go. 
I'll stay here in case they come back. Well, you seem to have acted very firmly. Oh, wasn't going to stand for that. No, of course not. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Pollard. Butler. Oh, by the way, how long did you stay? Quite some time. Were you with Mrs. Houston most of that time? Yes, all of the time. She was a bit nervous, naturally. What did she talk about? Oh, nothing in particular. Well, you must have talked about something. Yes. Well, did she say nothing that might throw light on the circumstances of her death? No. As a matter of fact, what we were talking about was a personal matter. I, I don't think it'd help even if I did tell you. Oh, it might, Mr. Pollard. I can assure you, you can rely on our discretion in anything you say. I realize that you were, well, rather fond of Mrs. Houston. Yes, I was. Did you ever make your feelings known to her? Well, I... Yes, Mr. Pollard? I... I... Yes, Albert? Well, you remember what we were talking of some time ago? Yes, Albert. At that time, I was so bold as to suppose I, I had something to hope for. Was I right? Oh, now, don't answer me now. Well, of course you were right, Albert. Well, you, you have thought about it since, I suppose. Oh, yes, I have. I've thought about it, that's fine. I've thought about it every day. But don't answer me now. But I just want you to know that I can see your point of view. Yes? I'm older than you are, I know, oh, but... Well, not so much, Albert. Well, if I'm older, I'm, I'm steadier than some of the young ones, and I'm just as fit here. I'll tell you something that happened in the art the other day. You know only strong ale. It comes in nine-gallon barrels, and, and the brewer's man, he usually puts it up on the counter for him. Well, you know what a great big strapping fellow he is. He'd make three of me. Well, I'm in the art at lunchtime. It's not my habit. I was just in for one. And Ernie says to me, I, I'm in a bit of a fix. The brewer's man's forgotten to put the barrel on the counter. Well, young George, he's the blacksmith. He's a great big lad, 21, you know, strong. He said, come on, let's have a go. I'll shift it. Well, he goes, he puffs, he blows, he can't move it. Then they all have a go, and I said, here, let me lift it. They all laughed. They didn't think I could. Oh, but I lifted it. I lifted it like it was a baby. And then, Mr. Pollard? And she, she done me the honour. I beg your pardon? She done me the honour of accepting my hand in marriage. Oh. And then you left? That's right. What time would that be? About seven. So as far as we know, you were the last person to see her alive. Oh, no, no. There was another chap came along just as I was leaving. Came to have his fortune told. Who was he, do you know? I don't know. I, I didn't like the look of him. Uh, a bookie. That's right. That's what she said. He was a bookie. And, you know, all shoe typing, check suit, dark, thick set fella. Oh, I didn't like the look of him at all. Photographs, Butler. Is he among those? That's the sailor, Murray. No, he, he's not there. Well, thank you, Mr. Pollard. I realize this must be very distressing for you. It is, sir, it is. No, Butler, no. The question is, why was Pollard in such a state of nerves? Not to be wonder that, is it? After what she meant to him. Aye, but what did he mean to her? Well, according to him... It... Well, there we are. His version of it is entirely unlike any of the others. Well, his doesn't fit in with the sisters, but it's not so unlike Mrs. Finch's. Now, what I mean is it's an entirely idealized portrait of a man in love. She was going to marry him, you know. Was she? He wasn't too eager to tell us about that proposal. Supposing she turned him down? He ups and uh, strangles her? No, it's not so funny as you think. An elderly, insignificant little man who's built a, an ideal world around a woman. A world in which, for the first time, he's the hero and she's a frail, trusting little thing who needs a strong man's protection. Suddenly she laughs at him. And the whole thing goes smashing. Ah, your tea's getting cold. And besides, there's this other chap, the sinister bookie. Yes, he sounded very like an afterthought to me. Excuse me, sir. There's two young women outside who've got some information on the Houston case. Oh, show them in. Come in, please. I'm Lana Clark, and this... 
And this is Shirley Jones. Well, last night, this Shirley and me... Chief Inspector Butler. Oh, pleased to meet you. Thank you. Well, as I was saying, last night, Shirley and me had a date to have our fortunes told by this Astra. And when we now, got there... Now, just a minute. What time was your interview? 7.30. Come on, Shirley, we'll be late. Oh, that's the house. Sounds like someone's having their fortune told now. Oh. I don't like it. Let's go, Lana. What, after five pence each way on the tram? Not me. We're not coming. Probably can't hear us above that din. Oh, come on, let's go. Oh, shut up, there's someone coming now. I'll be back as soon as I've drunk myself into a temper for you. It's just in time to prevent murder being done, you little devils. Well. Did you see the fortune teller, Astra, after that? Oh, yes, it was lovely. She told me I was going to meet a tall, dark... Quite so, Mr. Clark. Now, Miss Jones, did you notice anything unusual about her? Oh, yes. She had a bruise on her cheek and she seemed a bit, a bit sort of... Upset. Upset, yes. And how long were you there? Only about half an hour. This Irishman, you'd know him again, would you? Oh, yes. Oh, that's him! That's the man, isn't it, Shirley? Oh, he looks quite nice here. Of course, when we saw him, he was proper worked up, shouting his head off. Well, thank you, Miss Clark. I'm very much obliged to you. We shall probably need you later as witnesses. Ciao. Goodbye. Well? We can come back any time you like. Thank you, Miss Clark. So you see, Astra was alive after Paul had left. All right, all right. But I still think my reasoning was sound. Anyway, the bookmaker hasn't materialized, has he? Uh, he doesn't seem to matter in the light of the girl's evidence. Well, I'd better get moving. We've got Murray's photograph. I'll get Wilson cracking. Well, just a minute. The two girls heard the row when they were standing just below in the street. Surely... Butler, we're going to the house. She was sitting here. We're pretty certain of that. Now, if someone came in that door, she could see him in the looking glass. If it was someone she knew, she wouldn't be surprised to see him and wouldn't shout. Oh, I know. Lucas, go downstairs right out of the house and let yourself in. Yes, sir. Come up as quietly as you can. Coming in now, sir. Over there. Why, you <coughs> come on, get up, get out of it, Jim. Mr. Murray, I presume. Well, how is it you know my name? Who the devil are you, at all? We are police officers, Mr. Murray. Let him sit down. It is all a mistake, sir. You asked a lady. That would be rather difficult, Mr. Murray. Wouldn't it? Come now, Murray. Pull yourself together. What was she to you? How long had you known her? All my life. Childhood friends, eh? I met her for the first time last summer, but... but I'd known her all my life. Oh, come on now. Let's have it straightened. So you met her last summer? Yes, sir. It... it was between trips. We came here for the day, me and the third engineer, and... He picked up with, uh, with a young lady, sir, so not wishing to be in the way, I left him and went wandering about on my own. Shit! 
Saints anointed. I never knew I was such a crack shot. Crack shot? If you could shoot, you'd never hit anything with one of them guns. Look, them pipes cost money. Can't have them all broken. Here. You take your talent somewhere else and I'll give you this. Though no one's ever supposed to win it. <laughs> Does it sing at all? Sing? That's a regular little naughty guy. Bread in Barclay Square. <laughs> right, ya. I bet that ain't the first time you've been given the bird, sailor. You've got a lucky face. Wouldn't like your hand red, I suppose. Oh, I'm not superstitious, although I was born with a cow. You would be superstitious if you had a girl with you. Nothing like a girl for making a man weigh up his chances for the future. Why don't you uh, get yourself a girl, sailor? Oh, it is early enough, yes. Hello, hello, hello. Maybe it is yourself could be doing something better than standing here playing the gypsy. Maybe I could. Well, now. Thank you, sir, Pat. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, sailor. You steer the course, but keep it in the shallows. feel quite at home. Yes, so I notice. Hey! You got a nerve coming in here making free and easy with me, taking your boots off and all. And you can follow them. Good night, sir. All right, Sally, you can come up again. I just didn't want you to think I was here for anybody. Cigarette? No, sir, thank you. I sailed the next day and I, I never thought I'd see her again. And, and yet, somehow, I, I found myself thinking about her from time to time and, and wondering, just wondering, would she remember me at all? It was another three months before we put in at Southampton again. Yama Dawn, says I to myself. She'll have forgotten all about you. Why, it's Michael. Well, where have you come from? South America. Come on in. It's grand to see you. Kitchen's a warm place today. Hi, Mike, what you got there? Well, you're a sport and no mistake. Ah, but wait now till you see these. Nylons! Michael, you're a darling. <laughs> oh. Pork sausage, long time since I've seen that. Oh, help yourself to a tin. Well, I don't know. They're soft, rosier. They're nice, too. <laughs> Have one of each. Thanks, Sachs, I will. Tell me now, did you ever think of me at all? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, excuse me. Who's that? Oh, just a man who's come in to do up the house for me. All right. Must go out and get dressed. Can't sit around like this all day. 
here. I seen her nearly every day during that leaf and was always welcome. She told me to use the key behind the door the way her other friends did. It's worth a couple of pounds to take the worry off your face. Thanks. I I'll add it to the rest. I hope you're keeping an account. Why, Mike. Uh, this is a friend of mine, Mr. Murray, Mr. Pollard. How do you do? Well, I'll be off. See you tomorrow, I expect. What's this? Taken money from that old Egypt. Oh, it's just a loan. What's he to you, anyway? What's he to you, huh? Nothing. He's just kind, that's Kind, all. is it? Leading him first this way and then that. Taking all you can from him, the poor, pathetic creature. Well, if he wants to do things for me, why shouldn't I let him? Anyway, who are you to say what I should do? Did you never think of asking me? Didn't you know that I'd give it to you? Astro, where's the use of trying to put into words what the heart feels? It is true enough, I've only known you for a week, but, but what's a week, or for the matter of that, what's a lifetime? I love you, darling. You know it now, if you didn't already. You know, I, I've been thinking, a man needs some corner in this life to call his own and, and him traveling all over the globe. Why don't we get married, the two of us? I can't, Mike. Can't? What's this now? I am married. Why, you... No, not what you think. He's in hospital, a cripple from the war. He's not expected to live. It's a terrible thing to say, I know, but... I can't help it. To me, he's dead already. Oh. Well... Well, maybe the next time I come home... Saints, forgive me. I'm wishing the man's life away. We just have to wait, that's all. And you will wait? But you'll write to me, won't you, Mike? Oh, I, I'm not much of a hand at letter writing. But you must write, Mike. A letter means so much to a woman. It, it sort of brings us closer together. And you'll be away so long. Please write, Mike. All right, then. You'll take nothing from anyone but me. And you'll send that old idiot back. All right. Oh, I, sure, no, I, I don't care what's happened before. I, I can forgive you anything. But from now on, it'll be just the two of us, won't it? Just the two of us. Promise. Promise. But I never wrote. Though often my head was tormented with the thoughts of her, I, I could never put the words on paper. I never wrote, heaven help me. My husband died in February. Did you know that? When did you get back? Two days ago. I should have been back before, but we got delayed with engine trouble. I was longing to see her again, and I thought to find her in the fairground. Where's the lady who was here? Lady? Yeah. Lady? No, who might that be? <laughs> Not Astrid. Yes. Oh, she's hardly ever here. Well, uh, what about her booze? Oh, she only uses that for telling fortunes. What you mean? Hey, let go of me. Take your hands off. Say what you mean, you maggot, or I'll talk you. Anyhow, why ask me? I didn't know she was anything to you. <laughs> What have you come back for? I thought I told you to beat it yourself. Mike, I, I want... Uh, Mike, come down to the kitchen, Abby. Mike, don't be a fool! What's this, a frame-up? After all I've done for you. You dirty, double-crossing little... Here, 
There's 50 pounds here. It's all I've got. You can have that. Take your hands off me. I'll have the line. Oh! I'll pay you back for this, you treacherous little... Oh! Oh! So I came back too early for you, did I? No. I never expected to see you again. You did right, Michael. You did right. You gave me a promise, didn't you? For what it was worth. And I gave you mine. Only three months ago, remember? <laughs> three months at sea. With your lovely face in front of me. Was it too long for you to wait? No, no Mike. I did wait. I did wait. Oh, but you didn't come. But you didn't arrive, Michael. Did you have time to have everything nice and shipshape, I suppose? And me none the wiser? No. Just can't be trusted. You'd never be any different. I can't knock any day since he in here. By all the saints, I can knock some of the rottenness out of you. No. Get away from that window. Come here. No. It's yourself I should have kicked down the stairs. No. You have the look of the devil. But maybe it's just as well. I wouldn't want to swing to the likes of you. <laughs> I'll be back as soon as I've dunked myself into a temper for you. As I'm just in time to prevent murder being done, you little devils. At what time did you come back here, Mr. Murray? I never came back, sir. I was afraid of what I might do once my temper got the better of me. Now, where did you go last night? Drinking. I see. Any special place? No, sir. No special place. Just all around the town. Did you see anyone you knew? No, sir. I, I did not, at least. At least none that I can remember. I, I must have caught the 11 o'clock train because I was in Southampton soon after 12. And I thought about it all night and tramped the streets this morning. Her fault was mine. I, I never wrote and she'd asked me to. So you came back today to make it up? Yes, sir. And seeing you here, I thought it was the same thing all over again. You sure you didn't come back for this? Are you willing to sign a statement of what you've told us, Mr. Murray? Yes, sir. Wilson. Do you mind going along to the police station? acting? Well, he's Irish. Do you still think that Pollard invented the bookie? The bookie? No, you were right. He seems to be flesh and blood, I grant you. Well, shouldn't we try to get a line on him? After all, we've seen all the others involved with our own eyes. Have we? What about Astra? We've seen her only through the eyes of other people. And she's always been different. Mrs. Finch, for example. To her, she was the perfect lady. Who's poor Mrs. Finch? To the sister. Why don't you? Go on, why don't you? To Pollard. Well, thank you, Mr. Pollard. I don't know what I would do without you. To Baker. You know, for a guy that can read my mind, you sure waste a lot of time. And to Murray. All right, Mike. From now on, there'll be just the two of us. I promise. We've seen all these Astras, but which, if any of them, is the real one? Well, is it important? Yes, if we knew what sort of woman this really was, we'd be a lot nearer to finding out who killed her and why. Yes, but that's just pure speculation. Now, let's get down to facts. First of all, Murray. All right, Murray. He strikes me as a chap who might have killed her in a rage, but not one who would have gone away and brooded over it and then come back and killed her in cold blood. Not cold blood. Drunk. No, not even drunk. But if Murray's description of the bookmaker is true, he sounds a type who might have... Yes, you remember he said... After all I've done for you. Well, supposing he was infatuated with Astra. He finds she's cheating him, welshing on him. And worse still, his rival or one of them kicks him down the stairs, makes him feel a fool in front of her. Yes, he might well be the mean, vicious type. Remember he said, I'll pay you back for this or something like that? Are Baker and Catherine out of it then? No, of course not. Now let's see. Four people had some motive for killing her. None of them, as far as we know, has an alibi. There's the sister. Her lover, Baker. Do you remember she lied about his movements? Quite possibly, they talked things over together. 
He decided to go back and appeal to Astra's better nature. She wouldn't listen to him. He lost his temper and... Well, maybe. Or maybe Murray did get drunk and then go back. After all, this is his. Anyway, the next thing we have to do is to find this bookmaker. He must have kept his visits pretty dark. But I bet he couldn't hide them from Mrs. Finch. I wonder why she never mentioned him. Well, he always gave me a present when I opened the door to him. Always very open-handed. And you can overlook a lot of things where there's generosity, can't you? Yes, indeed. So his name's Cahoon and he's a bookmaker. That's right. Ever such a nice man, though. Well to do, too. Mrs. Houston had high hopes of him. I hinted that to you this morning, if you remember. Quite. Did you see him at all last night? No, but I didn't get home till late. Mr. Finch didn't come through till after ten. Is that you, Alfie? Yes, ma'am. It's long past your bedtime. You'll be oh, all... just a minute. Come in, son. Come in. Was this young man home last night? No, he went to the pictures. Tarzan, wasn't it, love? In the pictures, eh? Do you usually come home about this time? Yes, Mum says I've got to be in the house by nine. Nine o'clock. Was it about this time when you came home last night? Yes, just before nine. Oh. Now, I want you to think very carefully, Alfie. Now, think carefully, Alfie. Last night. Did you see anybody in the street or going into Mrs. Houston's house? No. You sure? Sure. All right, thank you, Alfie. Now be off. Don't forget to wash your neck. Right, ma'am. One minute, Alfie. Just a few How long had Mrs. Houston known this Mr. Cahoon? Oh, he was quite a new acquaintance. I know they met a number of times in town, but he didn't come to the house much. I fancy he didn't like to, him being, uh, well... Uh, yes, Mrs. Finn? He says Merry Christmas. What was that? Just asking if he heard anything when he passed the house last night. What did you say? You heard the parrot? Yes, he says Merry Christmas. Of course. What a fool I've been. Thank you, son. Butler. Well. What's on your mind? You remember what Murray said when he went back and found her with Cahoon? She shouted, why have you come back? I thought I told you to beat it, or words to that effect. Well? Well, she wasn't saying that to Murray, was she? No. Well, then. Are you going to see Cahoon now? No, we have another call to make first. I'm sorry to trouble you so late, Mr. Pollard, but uh, I'd like to talk to you. All right. Come in. You see, we're now in possession of some new evidence. Remember that bookmaker you told us about? Oh, him? Have you found him yet? Well, not exactly. Oh. Well, we know who he is. His name's Cahoon. Cahoon? You think he did it? Well, maybe. It's just a matter of deciding who went back to the house. You see, it might have been Murray. Murray? Is Michael Murray mixed up in this? Well, we found out he had a violent row with Mrs. Houston yesterday evening. Was Murray there last night? Yes. Murray? Of course. He's the man you want. Well, he's known to have left the house, but he threatened to go back. Hmm. You didn't happen to see him going back last night, I don't suppose. You might have heard him knocking at the door or something. No, no. But the key. The key behind the door. Murray wouldn't have to knock. He'd have used the key. Why, of course. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pollard. Of course, you can see the whole thing quite clearly now. So it was Murray. Well, strictly speaking, it's against the regulations, Mr. Pollard, but I don't think there's any harm in telling you. This is what I think happened. After leaving the house, Murray got drunk. He drank up a temper for her, as he says. And then he decided to go back and have it out. He knew the key was behind the door, as you say. It was dark outside, remember. So he could easily have slipped in and nobody the wiser. He'd seen the light in her bedroom window, so he knew where to find her. He couldn't be sure there was no one with her. So he climbed the stairs as quietly and cautiously as he was able. He reached the landing cross towards the door, and then, careful not to make a sound, he opened it, went in, and there she was, alone. 
Yes. Yes, that's what happened. Then the parrot said... Merry Christmas. She turned and saw you, Mr. Pollard, a murderer. Well, what do you want? Not come back to propose again, I hope. Thought I told you where you stood this afternoon. Oh, but what's the matter with you? That's what happened, isn't it, Mr. Pollard? <laughs>